The sun is the reason for life on Earth. It provides us adequate heat and sunlight to sustain life. The Earth receives so much sunlight from the sun. In fact, if we can use solar cells to convert one hour of sunlight the Earth receives into energy, we basically fulfilled one year of global energy demand. But we are far from achieving this. Combining all of the solar panels in the world will not even allow us to harness one percent of the sun's energy. In short, we haven't fully utilized solar energy. This is why solar energy is one of the most researched topics today in science and engineering. It is believed that with solar energy, we can provide our Earth with a cheap and sustainable source of energy, and change the world forever. Hello, what is up guys, Christopher here. In this video series, I'm going to guide you through an exciting and curious journey learning about the history, physics, prospects and research areas in solar cells. I want to start by laying out the intention of this video. If you were to search on YouTube on how a solar cell works, you usually find two types of videos. One that is short and doesn't really explain a solar cell accurately in detail. Another one, there is a lecture style video, which is very accurate and detailed, but it is a few hours long. There isn't really something in the middle. This is where this video series comes in. It's not too long, nor it is too inaccurate. I've been a researcher in solar cells for more than two years now. And I remember when I started out learning solar cells, I have to refer to multiple learning materials like books, Wikipedia, YouTube videos to really grasp the concept of solar cells. Which is why I really understand the struggles that you all are going through trying to learn solar cells. In this video series, I'm hoping to put my experiences and mistakes learning solar cells to benefit all of you. I fit together a series of systematic learning materials so that you can learn solar cells in a fun, intuitive, and rewarding manner. And before I start, I'd like to thank RS Grassroots Educations for sponsoring this video. You can also find written versions of my contents under the Design Spark website. Links down in the description box. In these articles, I've put links to further reference materials for your further reading. These materials are the ones that I've previously used before while I was learning about solar cells, so rest assured that they are good ones. So now, there is nothing else to do than to sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. In 1921, Albert Einstein won the Nobel Prize in Physics for discovering the photoelectric effect. When electromagnetic waves, such as light, shines onto a material like metal, Electrons can be emitted from the material. This all happens for one fundamental reason. Electrons can move after absorbing light energy. This discovery has inspired a next generation of scientists and researchers to convert sunlight into useful electricity, which led to the first practical solar cell in 1954 by Bell Labs. The photoelectric effect is a core scientific phenomenon that enabled the invention of solar cells. This 1954 solar cell was only 6% efficient and is made up of crystalline silicon. Crystalline silicon solar cells are what we call the first generation solar cells. This is the typical solar cell you see all around you. Until today, crystalline silicon has achieved up to 25% efficiency and is still the more popular choice for commercial solar cells because of its lower material and manufacturing costs. Crystalline silicon is made from silicon, and silicon comes from processing sand. There are two main types of crystalline silicon solar cells out there, monocrystalline and polycrystalline. The difference between them is that if we were to zoom in to its molecular structure, Monocrystalline solar cells are highly ordered throughout the entire material, but polycrystalline structures are only crystalline within a certain region 
limited by the grain boundary. This makes polycrystalline less efficient but cheaper because in order to produce monocrystalline solar cells, which is crystalline throughout the entire material, an additional process needs to be performed. Now crystalline silicon, like the one that I'm holding here, is only one of the different types of solar cells out there. In fact, there are many different types and configurations of solar cells that researchers have experimented with. How many? This many. In almost all solar cell lectures, you will find this chart in the introduction chapter. This chart is a record of all record-breaking efficiencies of different types of solar cells throughout history. This is obtained from the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, free to download and is regularly updated when certified record-breaking efficiency solar cells make the news. Monocrystalline solar cells are here and polycrystalline solar cells are here. This chart may seem daunting at first to learn, but once we learn on how a basic crystalline silicon solar cell works, we will come back to this chart where we begin to explore other types and configurations of solar cells. For now, this is it for chapter 1. I will see you again in chapter 2, where we will start discussing about semiconductor physics. Take care and goodbye. Thank you.